Hi, my name is Markus Hintner and I'm a member of the European SharePoint community. In this video, I will tell you why it is still important to use a SQL alias when setting up your SharePoint farm. When creating a SharePoint farm, the SharePoint product configuration wizard asks you for the name of the SQL server that you want to use. Many SharePoint farms are set up to use the real name of the SQL server, or at least what the real, what the real name was of the server when installing the SharePoint farm. Imagine that your SQL team decides that because of availability concerns, they need to move all databases to a SQL cluster, which of course has a different name than the original server. How would you tell SharePoint? There's a TechNet article named Move All Databases in SharePoint 2013 that tells you how to do it. Basically, you execute change database instance for all your SharePoint databases. Of course you have to shut down your farm first. That means stop all relevant services. But in an ideal world, changing the database server should not bother SharePoint. Instead, we would just change the SQL server and SharePoint doesn't even have to know about this. You can easily achieve this by thinking ahead at the time of installation. Just don't tell SharePoint the real name of your SQL server. Use an alias instead. An alias is created using the CLI-CONFG exit tool that comes with the SQL Server native client, which is a prerequisite for the SharePoint Server setup. Remember that you need to type the exact name of the executable. There is no link in the start menu. Go to tab alias and add an alias name, protocol and target server. If you ever want to use Kerberos, it is a good idea to use a fixed port for your SQL Server. Kerberos and dynamic ports just don't work. The alias you just created is a 64-bit alias. But as SharePoint is a 64-bit application, everything is fine and the alias can be used for setting up your SharePoint farm. But what if you want to use the alias, for example, in your SQL Server Management Studio, which is a 32-bit application? You can create a DNS entry, but this is not a good idea because it doesn't care about different ports, for example. The better way would be to create a 32-bit alias as well. To create a 32-bit alias, you need to open ClickConfGexe from C Windows Sys WOW64 and then use the same procedure as with your 64-bit alias. Remember that maybe it is not enough to create only one alias because you might want to split your databases at some point in the SharePoint life. So having multiple aliases might be the better way. For example, one for the configuration database, one for the content databases, and one for the service application DBs. Now that your aliases are created and used, you can easily change the target server without having to tell SharePoint. And of course, 
it's never too late to create some aliases, even if you do not plan to move your database in the near future. There is absolutely no performance impact when using an alias, so you do not lose anything. Instead, you win a lot of flexibility. This is a small script to show you how you would tell your SharePoint to use different aliases instead of one real SQL name. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, think ahead when installing SharePoint.